So now we come to the final chapter and here I thought I would just put a grand thread into all of these intangible assets. Now here we do have to be careful because when we put a grand thread in, it can be a kind of collapsing moment where everything seems like they're all the same and we're really just talking about the one thing. Now that's not the case. All of these intangible assets are their own devices. They are their own phenomenon. And of course, many of them are paradoxical and even completely contradictory to one another. So you do have to have them self-contained and work on them and think about them for yourself in their own right. Now that being said, we can put this grand thread through all of them, which is that of freedom. Freedom is your ability to navigate through whatever it is that you find in reality. It is your freedom to direct your consciousness, your awareness into what you are, what you experience, what you feel, what you perceive, how it is that the knowledge makes sense or doesn't make sense to you. So freedom is the ultimate value. So many spiritual teachers, Osho, Krishnamurti, whoever else you like, Ram Das, anyone that you like, they put this value as so important, as the highest value, right? Freedom. Freedom to move around physically, freedom to think whatever you want, and ultimately freedom to direct your awareness in such a way that it allows you to come into a deeper experiencing of reality. And of course it is, it is daunting to realize that you're free, to note that you're free to think whatever you want. It's a little bit like, well, what, what do you think? What should you think? How can one square that? Freedom of thought. And if you look at culture at large, then you can, of course, make the argument that, well, we're not free to think what we want because we have our cultural conditionings, right? Now, hopefully you're not in a kind of physical slavery. Thank goodness humanity has grown out of that level of consciousness, largely speaking. Of course, I know there are exceptions. But this thing of freedom is an ever widening, deepening spectrum that you understand. Freedom of thought is something that depends upon your background, upon where you're at in your journey. And it doesn't help to blame your culture. It doesn't help to blame others in any sense. Because if you're listening to this, right, you've listened to all these talks, you are already at a very high level of consciousness. You're already transcending psychology, philosophy, religion, which means you are already directing your consciousness in a very conscious way. You're directing your awareness in a very self-aware way. And that is the ultimate freedom. The ultimate freedom is to direct your consciousness. It's to be able to navigate in any way that you want. Right? It's a kind of ultimate multi-directionality. It's almost like we could say it's multi-directionality through multi-dimensionality. And we can thread all of these intangible assets with freedom. You'll see that freedom is the thing at work for all of these intangible assets in different ways. So we began the course talking about Marcus Aurelius and the premise that we have been working with is that, in a sense, 
you and me were in the same position as Marcus Aurelius. Because he has experience. He has his personal advisors. He has his knowledge. And he sits down and he meditates about these things and figures it out. And that's exactly what we're doing here, right? All of this course is forming a part of your knowledge, which you then take with your experiences. And then you can talk to your royal advisors or your friends or whoever it is that you <laughs> relate to. And then you sit down and you meditate over it. And then you come up with, well, what is it? What's the answer to this ultimate question? What is it that you've found? What is it that you can declare and celebrate of your own consciousness? And in one way, we are actually more intelligent than Marcus Aurelius. It's easier for us. More knowledge has cascaded out of human beings into existence since the time of Marcus Aurelius. It is so much more easy for us to understand the lessons of humanity from all that has been. And it's also easier for us to meditate because we have vastly more techniques. It is much more integrated, differentiated, understood. It's much more of a science now. So in a sense, we can actually meditate better than Marcus Aurelius. And yet, the other side is that really Marcus Aurelius is a genius. And really all the figures, all the towering figures that we've been talking about, the religious figures, the psychology figures, the philosophers, all of them are towering figures in their own consciousness, in their own way. And even with all the tools that we have, it takes your own consciousness to actually discover what it is, right? Everyone has to work their own consciousness. Everyone has to use all the tools that they've got to discover what they are. And really, in one sense, it doesn't matter what tools you've got. It's really up to you. Now, of course, here we are at an advantage because we're explaining things so obviously and so clearly. And we're making it so much easier, right? By now, you've got a sense of what you have to do. You know what you have to do. You take in knowledge. You look at your experiences and then you sit down on your cushion and you think about it, right? You meditate on it. And really, this book, Meditations, by Marcus Aurelius, it really should be called What I Have Learned From Meditating. That would be a more accurate picture, a more accurate title. And that's exactly what we do, right? That's exactly what you need to do. And you need to make your daily meditation an absolute hard rock founded habit, which means every day, every day, particularly most idealistically in the morning, you sit down on your cushion, you close your eyes, you set your timer for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour, something like this, and you think about it. Think about the things that we've discussed in this course and see if they make sense to you. See if you can find them within yourself. And if you decide, well, that's not a good idea, then get rid of it, right? I'm empowering you to find your own way with your own consciousness, just as Osho would, just as any other teacher would. And of course, when I say think about it, it doesn't necessarily mean think about it. It might also mean feel it. It might mean reminisce, go back to your past. 
It might mean look at it in a more perceptual kind of way. And you understand that by now, right? We've been talking about this all along. And really, knowledge is going to come to you. You're going to be exposed to ideas enough by now that the knowledge is there for you to get up and on your way with your own consciousness. Now, some people don't have a critical mass for their knowledge, right? They do need to read more books. By now, by the end of this course, you heard enough, right? I don't need to explain another developmental psychology model. I don't need to explain another philosopher's ideas. We don't need to deconstruct religion and do comparative religion studies, right? We don't need to look at the pillars of Buddhism and see how they're different to the pillars of Islam. If you want to do that, great. But now we're beyond that. Now we're at the stage where you've got enough knowledge and you need to meditate. You need to sit down on your cushion, close your eyes without distractions, without having the phone on, without having the internet on. And also not having distractions of the mind, right? Don't sit down and think about all the things you want to do. Don't sit down and think about all the relationship dynamics that you've got going on. That's a distraction of thought. What you really need is to sit down and think about what it is that you're going into. Look at your consciousness. So that is the real take home message. That is the real thing that you need to see from all this. And there's plenty of stuff that you can go into with that. So the ultimate freedom is the freedom to sit down and meditate. And it costs you nothing and it brings you the universe. It brings you everything. So I would like to thank you also very much for coming along for this course. I don't want to, I don't want to finish it on such a serious note. <laughs> but of course, for me, this has been a learning process. This has been an evolution of my consciousness as much as it has for you. So very heartfelt thanks and warm feelings. Please do leave a five star review. Please do leave me any of your comments. I know there are a lot of things we've discussed and we've sort of not discussed more. We've sort of had to draw a line somewhere and I understand that. So if you have a specific question about something, ask me and I can answer it. Right, because I've had to draw the line in certain places, otherwise we just end up explaining everything. Right, we can't explain everything, we do have to make our way through it in a rough sort of way. So if there's something you want to ask about, do leave me a comment and share your experiences of this course. Share your experiences of these ideas that we've discussed. So in the last talk, we're going to talk about integration and that's just going to be the final thing that you need. But of course, please do leave a five star review. It's very easy for you to click the button and it means the world to me. <laughs> this is my work. This is my life. And leave me a comment. It's great to know that people are learning and people are discovering these things as well. It's a very beautiful path that we're on. And when you have integration and you're doing the integration, then you are allowing it to be as it needs to be. So I'll talk about more of that in the last talk. You can click on that and thank you very much and very much enjoy the rest of your day.